much. Okay, so now we move to the other uh, section, which is uh, questions from friends uh, on social media. Okay. Isabella from Brazil asks you okay. the following question. I would like to know uh, if a professor Ishigoro think that the pandemic will uh, weaken or strengthen our relationships with robots since uh, there have been many changes in our societies during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if yes, will this mean coexistence with the robots? Will the humans uh, coexist with the robots in the post-pandemic era? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the important thing is, uh, is to keep the, our activities under these pandemic situations by using robot technologies. I'm running the Avatar uh, project. Avatar project means, uh, you know, the, um, we are developing the uh, teleoperated robots the, uh, uh, to support the human activities uh, and the, under these pandemic situations. So I believe, you know, the, after the pandemic, this pandemic, so we want to keep uh, this kind of a lifestyle, right? So, and uh, if we can the, uh, remotely work, then of course we want to, you know, the, uh, uh, we, we want to remotely work by using our uh, Zoom teleconference teleconferencing systems and the avatars, right? The problem with avatar is more flexible. And that, you know, the, obviously that this kind of a teleconference system has the, uh, the limitations, but if we uh, use the avatars, we can do the more things, right? So I believe, uh, you know, the people uh, will accept the, app, the avatars, the robot technology and the computer graphics agent technology after this pandemic. So I think it's a chance to accept the uh, new technologies and the change of this world you know, to the more sustainable world. Yes, I just want to remind you that we don't have that uh, it's you can take your time by answering the question because the one minute uh, no, sorry, sorry. question is over. So you just take okay. your time while answering the questions. Okay. So okay. now um, another question from Sarah from Finland. Mm -hmm. Sarah is uh, asking the following question. I would like to know how people react to your robots. Are they afraid of them? And if some has ever mistaken them with the humans? So, no, I, okay. yeah, if you got my question. Uh, but, well, you know, actually, you know, the, well, uh, so when the people, they watch the TVs and they, they read the magazines, right? You know, people may have a kind of a negative opinion like that. Right, but once they come to the my lab and you know interact with the robot, so almost all people they completely change their mind, right? So the ro they can accept the robots because you know it's quite interactive and uh, um, you know basically it's easy to distinguish which is which. I mean, you know, it is a robot, but but the, uh, the we can we can accept the conversation with the robot. So, so you know um, the. So that is a very different experience. I mean, you know, um, through the TVs and through the uh, magazines, you know, people may have some misunderstanding, but once they interact with the real robot, I think many people, uh, they will change their mind. Okay, so Anna Sophie from Canada is asking the following question. As a robot creator, do you think that someday self-learning robots will be able to have emotions of their own? Um, emotion, I think that is not so difficult to implement. Okay, so the, but we don't know the, what uh, what is the real emotional mechanism of humans, but uh, you know, the, we, um, we can give some emotional expression function to the robots. And uh, uh, you know, and in order to have uh, the, uh, the emotions, I think a robot does not need to have a function of a self running. And, Right, so um, we can just simply mimic the human like emotions uh, uh, with the robots. So I think that is a possibility, right? So the, the robot can have uh, the function of emo uh, the em emotional facial expression and the gesture expressions, and you know the robot can emotionally talk with uh, humans, peoples. Okay, so. And but of course we don't know the exact uh, the mechanism of uh, uh, human emotions. It's it is still open question. Yes, Sami from Azerbaijan is asking the following question: Robots 
can identify objects like cats, black and white cats, but will they assign some more meaning to this, mm -hmm. these objects? Um, mm -hmm. Let's say black cat is a bad cat. Black cat mm -hmm. is crying <laughs> cat. Right, right, right. So, how we uh, how the the can the robot have uh, the deeper understanding about the uh, animals and objects? That is a very difficult, uh, you know, the uh, challenge. I think, you know, the current deep learning and AI technologies, you know, just doing some uh, simple classifications, and the, you know, robot or, or the AI they cannot have a deeper concept of the uh, the object and the animals, right? So. We don't know the, how we can do that, but uh, um, well, I think well, this is a kind of step-by-step -step approach in the near futures. So the the you know, if a robot has the uh, own sensations and own bodies, you know, robot may have uh, experience in a real world, and then you know, robot may find the uh, deeper meanings to the uh, cat and the, you know, animals and objects. So that is a possibility. But in order to do that, you know, AI need to have a body properties. AI need to have a body like a robot. Yes. Uh, Jesus from Spain mm -hmm. is asking the following question. If someone destroys a robot, would we think or wish that this robot is protected by its right to property or the androids right to property mm -hmm. i see i think it depends on the uh, uh well the societies right so always the human rights given by a human society right so so if uh, we can have a good relationships with a robot so definitely we want to give a uh, human like right to the robot and the android right yes. so um so, you know um, so the, my answer is it depends on the relationships the uh, uh, between a human and android right so um, but uh, right now we, we unfortunately the, uh, the we do not have a human level the android and the robots yet so we need to improve the robots and more right so robot cannot ha cannot establish the uh, uh, human-like relationships with the humans, okay. but the uh, futures, I think there is a possibility that we accept the uh, human-like robots and android as our friend, and then you know, the uh, we wanna the people uh, may give a human right to the uh, robots. Yeah, because nowadays we are talking about the robots' rights. And uh, mm. David Gunkel, I think you know him, they interviewed him for my PhD dissertation. And mm. I think you met him in Denmark. As we mentioned you in our discussion. I mean, mm. he is one of these uh, prominent scholars that are bringing this discussion whether uh, robots deserve rights or not. Mm -hmm. So I think this is very interesting uh, debate. I think it's it's very heated debate and the, people are divided on this issue as well. Mm. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, it depends on the uh, uh, level of uh, intelligence of robots uh, and, uh, you know, the relationships with the human. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, also in, in, in Asia or in, in, in Japan, but I know that in the US and here in Europe as well. I mean, this, this topic is very much like uh, it's a, a serious topic and people really have strong opinions on, on this on this issue, whether at, at some point in the future, when a robot has a has a consciousness and and becomes aware of the environment and, and moves autonomous, whether uh, it deserves a, a right that in in a sense that he, this robot uh, cannot be harmed or or um, if if this robot harms another person or another robot that uh, it deserves punishment. Uh, one of the serious questions that is surrounding. Uh, robots nowadays. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, you know, the, if we can develop that kind of a robot, I think that is going to be a great achievement in robotics and AI, right? Yes. So the one of the uh, big mysteries of what consciousness is, right? Yes. So we want to understand what consciousness is. Yes. Right. And uh, and the 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 the, the, the 
And but I think you know the, I, I understand the, that kind of discussion. But we are not so stupid, right? So you know, the always the uh, we we're gonna install a kind of a, a security function to the robot. If we want to stop the robot, you know, they you know they, we can press a button to stop it, right? Yes. So so that is the, the difference between robot and the human, right? Yes. So and the, we are designing robots. Okay, we are controlling a robot. Therefore, you know, if a robot is doing a bad thing, of course, definitely we're gonna stop the robot. Right. Yes. So, yes. And, um, and, you know, and and you know, but um, if a robot, we we if we improve, uh, install the very very clever function to the robot, so robots uh, may not like to have a, that kind of a switch on the bottom uh, to be stopped. Right? Yes. Uh, then in a, uh, well, um, well, we're gonna have a more the uh, difficult situations. But at the moment, probably we accept the robot as a human. Okay, there is no difference between a human and a robot in, in in such moment because the robot is so clever, they're so autonomous, right? So what what well, you know then we need to seriously think about the definition of a human at the moment. Thank okay. you. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, the following question is from Victoria from Mexico. Victoria mm -hmm. is asking the following question. Do you think that robots with a human-like appearance may affect how we relate with each other as humans? Of course, why not? You know, the, uh, we human, we have uh, many, many brain functions to recognize human-like appearance, movement and gestures and, 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 and the voice, right? So our brain is tuned for recognizing human, human-like appearance. Therefore, you know, it's better to give a human-like appearance to the android, but that, that this is for the short in, in the interactions, okay? So if we, if we do not have a long time, um, well, you know, the, suppose uh, we, okay, that we have just one minute to talk with the, the robot, right? So if a robot doesn't have a human-like appearance, it is difficult to understand how to, how the, how to establish the communication, right? But if a robot has a very human-like appearance, it's easy because we can use the knowledge about the humans and therefore having the conversations, okay? And but uh, you know, and if we have a much time, like one hour and one day and one week, right? We can accept the more robots like robots. The robot doesn't need to have a human-like appearance you know, for the wrong interaction. Yes, yes. Uh, Alfonso from Italy uh, asks the following question. What Japanese people think about or expect from robots? All expect? What, what do you mean? Yeah, what Japanese people think or expect from robots? Oh, oh okay, okay. So how do they, how Japanese people see robots? Mm. I think, uh, you know, that probably that we do not have uh, so much difference between the Japanese people and the uh, foreign, foreign people, right? Uh, well, basically that we have very similar ideas, but the education is different, I think. You know, the, um, uh, we do not, well, um, Education means uh, maybe the religions, our religions accept any kind of uh, creatures and as a friend, right? Therefore, you know, we can easily accept the robots um, as the, our uh, social partner though, right? So, but uh, in, in a Christianism, I think you may distinguish robot and others, and, right? So, so I think, uh, you know, the difference is the, uh, is just kind uh, that kind of, uh, uh, religious the um, uh, ideas okay and uh, but uh, basically you know the uh, children's behavior the reaction to the robot is identical yes. right I, I don't see any difference right so and children loves the robot very much in, in, in Japan and in other countries okay yes so yes the uh, difference is just education I think okay yes